Miss Davis, are you there? Yes, I am. Miss Davis, you can switch okay. on your okay. video. Okay, yeah. video. Hanji, you can switch on your video. Okay, thank you. I request Guruji to please switch on your video. Guruji? Uh, I have sent a message to Shiva. He is getting it done. Okay. Okay. Uh, he will join in a few minutes. He's just finishing his webinar and address to the Haryana Yoga Council. So you can uh, maybe just uh, one minute more. Sir, pella address you. You can start talking about the college and the. Okay. Concept. So should we start? Yeah, please. Okay. Wishing you all a very pleasant afternoon. On this colossal occasion, God of rain even is so happy that he has shared his blessings from the heaven. So before commencing this session, let's seek the blessings of Almighty God for the success of this webinar. I pray to Almighty God to please make it a successful event. Thank you, God. Thank you, Almighty. I, Sapna Nanda, Principal of Government College of Yoga Education and Health, Chandigarh, on behalf of my faculty and Yoga Scholars Group of PGI Chandigarh, extend very heartiest greetings to all the distinguished dignitaries who are sharing the dais and those dignitaries who are present of the dais, along with our very esteemed audience of this international webinar on the theme, Relevance of Yoga in Present Day Scenario, which is being organized in prelude to 6th International Day of Yoga 2020. On this prodigious occasion, we feel honored to have His Excellency Sir, Shri VP Singh Badnorji, Governor of Punjab, come Administrator of Chandigarh, who has been kind enough for having spared his precious time to motivate the yoga enthusiast by his gracious presence. Thank you, sir. Thank you we much. are indeed blessed. Thank you so much, sir. We are indeed blessed by the presence of Padma Shri and Yoga Shri, Dr. H. R. Nagendraji, a worldwide acclaimed personality for his immense contributions in the field of yoga. His graceful persona has lent an extra charm to this program. Guruji will be joining soon. And further, adding glory to this webinar is the international collaboration with Miss Liani Davis, who has roots of scholarly wisdom in India and has been disseminating her knowledge of yoga for the holistic well being of mankind in the contemporary societies around the globe. 
We are indeed grateful to Professor Akshayanand, Head of Neurosciences Lab, PGI Chandigarh, who is the real driving force behind this webinar. And we really look forward to this association. And moving ahead towards the proceedings of this webinar, I take this opportunity to briefly introduce Padmashiri and Yogashiri, Dr. H. R. Nagendraji, who is a doctorate of, from Indian Institute of Sciences and moved to NASA, Marshall Space Flight Center, United States of America, for his postdoctorate degree. And finally, he pursued human engineering as against mechanical engineering in search of reality. Fascinated by the teachings of Swami Vivekananda, who brought out the wisdom contained in Upanishads of Yoga and the spiritual lore, he was urged to combine the best of West and best of East. So since Guruji has not joined yet, mm -hmm. so we'll move the session. To I can, Ms. if you Kiris. allow, I can help you co-host it. And uh, Guruji is on another webinar with the permission okay. of Honorable Governor. Uh, we can continue introducing uh, the Honorable uh, Dr. Nagendra's uh, beautiful journey from NASA okay. in the US, as uh, Dr. Sapna just mentioned. And she and he came over to Svayasa and he set up this world's uh, first yoga university in Bangalore, which runs a bachelor's and master's program. Now he is with us, Dr. H.R. Nagendra okay. Guruji. That's great. He just switched from another webinar. Thank you, Guruji, for making it happen. We are really indebted to you. Dr. Sapna just introduced uh, you to the viewers and to Honorable Governor. We know you were busy with another webinar and have kindly consented to be with us. We are really excited. You are being watched across, uh, uh, if not uh, less, at least 10,000 people. Uh, we have uh, actually completed 1 million views, Guruji and Honorable Governor Ji, uh, in last 87 days. So I will give the mic back to Dr. Sapna. Pranam Guruji. Pranam Guruji, you are well in time. And I request you to please share your lifelong experiences with us about the theoretical and practical aspect of ancient heritage of yoga, and especially in the times of present scenario of COVID-19. Over to Guruji, sir. Thank you, my dear brothers and sisters. Swapnaji, I am so delighted that we have been able to organize this wonderful program, Swapnanandji, and the college for which you are the principal has been doing wonderfully well for this thing and Akshay Anand has told me so much about you and the work that you have been doing that. I congratulate you for all the work that you have you, been sir. doing. And this time the International Day of Yoga which is being celebrated everywhere has a very special way of its development. In all the earlier IDYs, we used to gather together in a big field and celebrate this in thousands and thousands of people. You know, I remember the first time when we had that in Delhi, Rajput, we had nearly 50,000 people. And our Honorable Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji said, now Rajput has been converted into Yogapath. You know? Yes. And since then afterwards, we had that wonderful thing in Chandigarh and it was also a big hit. Though the previous night, there was tremendous amount of rain that fell and it was a big challenge. Next morning, we were thinking how we are going to do that. But thanks to nature, the rain stopped and our team there, uh, DC, and all these people worked so well under the dimensions of our governor -ji, and it was big success again. So this is how it was all going on. Because so this time, COVID Mahamari again. So we are constrained not to gather in big numbers. You know. So what to do, what to do? You know. But it is such difficult that provide new opportunities for growth. Using the technology, now we have been able to do that in a big way. Earlier, if it is to reach hundreds of thousands of people now, at a time, it can go to lakhs. Just like Swami Ramdevji was telling from the other side, now we had nearly two crores of people who are witnessing the webinar which is going on from Haryana. And this is the beauty of modern technology. So staying in our home, we can all do that. 
on 21st when it is going to start off with a brilliant lecture from our honorable prime minister 6:30 in the morning you know and 7 o'clock we have the protocol idy protocol for 45 minutes then 15 minutes of the introduction and message from all the yoga masters people can stay home and do the practice and learn and go deeper and deeper in the comfort of the house we can do that and that is the beauty this time particularly in the context of uh, the present scenario that we are having yoga has become very very important in our lives yoga not as some physical exercises or asanas or pranayama or mudra or pandhas kriyas but the science of holistic living i call it. it's a way of life you know so we have to bring that way of life into our midst you know? and what is that way of life it to convert every action we do into a yoga is it ever possible many people think asana or pranayama or something you have to do for doing yoga but when you say every action can be done seeing hearing eating drinking walking urinating excreting everything can be yoga it looks impossible but look at what krishna bhagwan says in bhagavad gita in that beautiful verse he describes yes it is possible pashyan shrunvan prashan dighram arshnan gachan sapan shwasan pralapan visrujan grunham unmishan nimishan api indriyan indriyartheshu vartanta iti dharayan he says that seeing hearing eating tasting walking drinking every action visrujan grunham even urinating and excreting everything can be yoga that is to convert karma into karma yoga what is that secret he brought out and this is a very special way of doing the actions i call it as a dual mode operation what is that special way of doing action you know first we have to understand in our mind that we have got the superficial gross layer of the mind which goes on thinking and doing all activities and there is a subtler inner layer of the mind and all of us are familiar with that when we are reading something or we are hearing something something deep within us is bugging oh my father was in the hospital he was in a surgery what would happen things are going on inside this is the subtler layer of the mind till outside we are hearing lectures are doing something and activities are going on so what krishna said that inner layer of the mind has to be brought into calmness peace silence and blissful awareness outside you do any activity yogastha kuru karmani sangam tyaktva dhananjaya as he says attuned to that self do all activities so inner layer of the mind should be tuned to that infinite consciousness pure things what is that yogastha sthiti that is attuned to our original state what is our original state it is a state of kaivalya as patanjali says what is the state of kaivalya are told as moksha in the vedanta terminology it is a state of infinite bliss it is a state of infinite knowledge infinite power infinite freedom beyond space time causation and that is our original state that's the state from where the whole creation has come and that's our original state so to tune ourselves to this is the special technique that shri bhagwan has given in this thing that's what we have to do so to be happy all the time under all circumstances is the real yoga somebody asked me sir can you give me one tactic i don't have time for anything to one one technique which i by which i can practice i said that tactic is santosha you know what of the niyamas be happy all the time as i always see you smiling and doing this thing wonderfully and be happy all the time and maintaining the santosha that means inside there should be ananda bliss tune to that ananda mai kosha do all activities if you do that we have the solution the health will improve efficiency will improve you move from our normal health to better health and the perfect health all this thing health wise and the life becomes so happy day by day day by day day by day and this will contribute to our development of better health and to even meet the challenge of the present corona virus that is hitting us we know the corona virus is the biggest 
virus today among all the virus team. It's about 0 0.025 microns in volume. But our immune system is very, very strong. And the white blood cells which are there are much bigger in size, almost 100 times bigger than the coronavirus. Number-wise, if you take the virus that come maybe in thousands or a million or so. But our WBCs are in billions. So our immune system is all well equipped to deal with all such infectious and outrageous virus things that can attack us. We have a very strong army within us. Also, we have got our border security force. When the corona starts entering into our nose, our border security forces will start coming into the picture. You know? When it goes down to the respiratory, the natural killer cells will all be able to throw it out. This all can happen very easily. But if you do not keep your immune system in good health and good strength, you have a problem. So why does this happen? Because of a wrong lifestyle. So what is the lifestyle that is to be promoted? Ayurveda said, Ahara, Vihara, Vichara, and Achara. These are the four dimensions. You know? If we keep all these things in a healthy way, the immune system will be in fine. But if you start disturbing that by the imbalances, several levels, that when we are in the house, we are quarantined in the house, or we are locked down in our houses, then you start thinking, what a drudgery. I am put into a big prison and so much of anxiety and stress and fear. And when this is going to come out, you know, I can't bear this, I can't bear this. And you start worrying about it, you become anxious and full of stress, and you start hating it, and you want to run out of this thing. You know? This is what is happening in New York. I was talking to our friends in Washington, D.C. They said in New York, they're rebelling now. We can't anymore say like these things. It's already one and a half, two months, three months, we are staying in the house, and we can't know. We have to go there. What is going to happen after all? We may get infected and we may die. It doesn't matter. It is better to die rather than stay in that horrible situation of the house with isolation with these things. You know? If this happens, the immune system gets completely suppressed. Stress is the immunosuppressant factor. And that is the one that can increase the corona attacks. So what should be done? You have an option. As human beings, you have an option to turn tables. Instead of getting anxious and fearful and all other things when we're in the house. We must take this as a wonderful opportunity for us. And we had one of our uh, emergency surgeons in London, very close friend of ours. You know, he got positive and he was in the hospital. Then he came to the house, he was quarantined and he was saying that he was hating that life. He went on doing that and so anxious, so fearful, this thing. Then we sent him the message that now you have a choice. You can become anxious like this, or become stressed up, or get afraid of it, and hate such a situation. Or you have an option to take to yoga life, you know, a healthy life, happy life, and develop the family ties and everything you can do, like these things, you know. Choose the practice of yoga, and choose this thing. So as human beings, we have always two. One is to grow higher and higher and higher, another to go down, you know. And that is the dimension. That is called the Daivi Sampath and the Asuri Sampath. In the Daivi Sampath, it helps us to go. And Krishna says, when you have this opportunity, take to the right path. Uddharet Atmana Atmanam Na Atmanam Avasadayet said that don't degrade yourself and go down the ladder. Use the right thing. You know? Start developing, developing. So you have that choice. So start doing that. He said, yeah, this is wonderful, this is wonderful. I should start doing that. He started doing the asanas, the pranayama, and special things. He started doing all meditation, and he had the Ishtadevata in the Vasveshwara and started doing these things. He went on doing this, and he started feeling so happy. Just within a few hours, in a day, he started wonderfully developing himself. And he said, these 15 days of my quarantine in my house was the best time I never had in my life, he said. This is what we have to do. We have a choice. Use that freedom to develop. As human beings, we all have the choice to go the right way. But if I don't do that, we have. Having said all these things by Krishna Bhagavan to Arjuna finally says, 
do the way that you want. You can go this way or you can go this way. Choose whatever you want. Who wants to be suffering from tension, stress, disease, and death signals and all these things? Everybody wants that. We want to be healthy. We want to be happier day by day, day by day. So that's the right way. That's the yoga we have to offer. So we have to raise ourselves from our normal level to become great, super divine human being. Then our whole system will be full of energy, vitality, dynamism, and full of bliss and happiness. And that is the dimension which Krishna says, Yo Vastaha Purukarmani Sangam Tektva Dhanandaya. Attuned to that inner self, go on doing the action wonderfully well. That is the thing he gives us the solution for the present thing. So it will strengthen our immune system and is the real solution in a condition where we don't have the vaccine, we don't have the medicine to deal with that, except the isolation or physical distancing and quarantizing ourselves in the house. What is the solution that modern medical system has given? Yes, we will follow all these things, but we have to bring in the real solution. That's what we offer, and thousands and thousands of people have been able to use. And thanks to our yoga masters in the country, our Swami Ramdevji, Jagivastevji, Sri Sri Ravi Shankar, and Obiti Variji and all these masters have been able to promote in big numbers, in not lakhs, millions and crores they have been doing. And therefore, we have a great message that is being passed on to everybody. And each one of them have such myriad devotees and people and things are growing. Now that is the one that we have to bring on these days. And therefore, on this International Day of Yoga, which is coming up soon, Sixth International Day of Yoga, we are going to promote yoga in a very good way. And the Ministry of Pais is doing a wonderful thing by giving the entire protocol and bringing this message of doing that. And we have the great message from our Prime Minister who has passed on that everybody should do the practice of yoga. And he has given the message which you can go through and you can probably announce in this uh, seminar with you. And that is the thing that's happening. And our Prime Minister is the role model as to how they have been able to practice yoga and be dynamic, full of energy, vitality, and face any situation. And we have the challenge of COVID this side, and we have the war things there, and the cyclones and other things. Everywhere it's coming up in the country, but still, with the vitality and everything, we have been able to do that. And as a leader, as a role model, our country has been able to give the direction. That's what we all have to raise ourselves to the great height to make this country great. And the whole world is looking towards yoga looking at India as to how India is facing this situation, you know, and we have to show this and the solution is yoga and practice of yoga and incorporation of the yoga into our lifestyle and make our life full of happiness, joy, full of energy, strength, vitality, dynamism and efficiency. And in this direction you are taking the whole thing and I wish all the best to all the viewers and your entire team of students and to whom we have been doing that. And that is the relevance of yoga in the present day scenario, in the wake of the sixth International Day of Yoga, which you are organizing. I thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to share with you. I was a little afraid that our power may go, internet may fail, therefore I had told Akshay, I have given something in record because many times it has happened. Today, fortunately, nothing has happened because we are in a rural area, often it happens and we have been Nice that we have been able to do these things directly online. Thank you very much, Dhaniwad. And once again, congratulations to you and to our dynamic governor there who has been able to develop the thing so nicely. Thank you very much. You have to unmute yourself, madam. Oh, my God. My life. Mm. Good uh, Dr. Sapna, you have to unmute yourself. There will be a bar at the uh, below the screen. You can just unmute it. Uh, while she, yeah, you are fine. Yeah. Thank you, Guruji, for your words of wisdom. Words are really not enough to express how blessed we are with your presence, with your words of wisdom. Thank you so much, Guruji. And now I request Guruji to launch the first volume of our e-journal, The Yogic Insight, which is the maiden endeavor of the faculty of Government College of Yoga Education and Health, Chandigarh.
so it is the compilation of research articles of various scholars researchers in the field of yoga so we'll first volume of e journal the yogic insight रिक्वेस्ट गुरुजी या थैंक यू वेरी मच इट्स अ नाइस थिंग एंड हियर बाय आई अप्रिशिएट द वंडरफुल थिंग दैट यू हैव ब्रॉट फॉर एंड द योगिक इनसाइट इज कमिंग अप द आई release this e journal on this day thank you very much Namaste. thank you sir thank you so much thank you guruji thank you guruji now proceed okay sir now proceeding further let me introduce once again miss leni davis whose initial training was with sivananda yoga and vedanta academy of south india and she is particularly drawn to philosophical historical and over to miss davis please thank you dr nanda so good afternoon to everyone uh, his excellency and dr nagendra dr nanda and professor anand and it's a uh, truly a great honor to be here today to commemorate the 6th international day of yoga with you all and thank you very very much for this kind invitation it means a lot to me um i'd like to speak a, a little bit about how patanjali yoga sutra helps us to understand some of the reactions that we might be having to our present situation and also um i i will be reiterating some of the things that dr nagendra said about how it's possible for us to practice yoga in in our daily life in ways that gives us some um, resilience and an optimism in all the the moment to moment things that we do during our day and i too would like to um to mention or to commend the worldwide yoga community on how well we've adapted to coming together online as we are now it, i think it's absolutely wonderful and when you think about it we're all followers of an ancient oral tradition <laughs> where we're used to being together um you know at this at the feet of our teachers face to face as student and teachers and and here we are we've been able to adapt to this new way of being together and and here we are in opposite hemispheres of the world and joining together um in yoga it's beautiful um and i believe it's a great testament to you and to the value um that people place on the benefits of yoga so strongly that millions of people all over the world have adapted so quickly to technology as a way of keeping together in yoga through through classes and trainings and forums such as this and i think that you know we're making history this year in 2020 we're making history in the way that yoga is communicated through human evolution in in such a way as we're doing now and as as dr nagendra said one of the great benefits of this time is that the global yoga community has been able to come closer together um as we get used to meeting virtually instead of um waiting till we all travel and we're sitting together in the same room we will again one day i'm sure and i think to when we first celebrated the international day of yoga back in 2014 and it would have been very hard to imagine that we'd be living situations as peculiar as we are at the moment and yet india's ancient day that when we first celebrated in 2014 we wouldn't have imagined that we were living in such peculiar times as we are now but yet i feel that india's ancient tradition of yoga is exactly what we all need to help us maintain some stability as we move through this time of change that's caused by the pandemic and the restrictions on our usual lifestyle and we all know that yoga has been documented for thousands of years in many texts and traditions as a state of mind that our yoga is a state of evenness of mind it's a state where we have an equilibrium a sense of peace and a an inner state of consciousness where we it's possible for us to remain peaceful and content um no matter what's happening in our external environment it is possible um yoga also provides us with the science and the techniques the methods for how we can achieve that state through our daily life 
And I would think that in reality for many of us at the moment, because we have a, a human nature, it's a little more challenging than usual to feel that peacefulness or confidence that we that we might usually do it as our our world as we know it and our life has gone through quite a bit of upheaval. Um, for me to help uh, understand the human condition, I've been looking at Patanjali's Yoga Sutras in chapter two in verse 15, when he talks about some of the, the causes of our suffering. And Patanjali will say that the most discerning amongst us will, will see that in our worldly life, we'll always have some vulnerability to suffering due to several things. And one of them is paranama, through change, because nature, prakriti, including our own human nature, is always subject to the fluctuations of the gunas. This means we're continually having to adapt to change. And some changes in life can be small or some like we're having now are very, very big. And so sometimes we change smoothly, sometimes not so smoothly. We also may suffer due to tapas, tapas we know as burn or to heat. And inside of us all, there might be a little burning seed of worry and anxiety that occurs when things don't turn out the way that we expect them to. And we feel uncertain in these changing circumstances. Um, Patanjali says we'll always suffer because of samskara, because of our habits. And while it's very healthy for us to develop positive behavioral habits, and social order in condition norms and things that we do, when they're interrupted, inevitably we become, we suffer. And currently I think that many of us um, feel that change in our, in our order and our habits. And we're wondering, you know, who we are in the world when so many of the things that are familiar to us are taken away. And, and what will we do with our changed lifestyles or how will the future look? Still, I feel we're very, very blessed to be here celebrating yoga as a science that reminds us that much of the suffering that occurs to us is created by our own mind's reaction or perception to what's happening around us. And we do have a choice. And Patanjali lets us know that within ourselves, we have all of the solutions that we need through the techniques of yoga. So anything that our mind creates as a problem, our mind can also remove that um, problem and we return to a state of yoga. Um, and fortunately, yoga gives us many, many tools and many paths to find our way back to the state of yoga. Just like Patanjali with the thousand heads, we have thousands of solutions to find our way back to a state of equilibrium, no matter what's going on. For me, at the beginning of, of lockdown, I was hearing lots of conversation in the yoga community about um, what will I do now that I can't go to yoga? And now the class isn't on how am I going to do yoga? And it set me to thinking that, that in this time, I think as modern yoga practitioners and educators in yoga, that we really need to voice the importance at this time that yoga is always there, it's always part of our life, and that it's a personal discipline and a yogic lifestyle, and that yoga is about our, our attitudes to our very existence and our relationships to ourselves and to each other and to our environment, to our spiritual nature. So it's not just something that happens on the mat or in the yoga room or in particular environments, but it's with us all the time. And again, to explain that, I've been looking at um, or considering um, chapter two, verse one of the Yoga Sutras when Patanjali is talking about Kriya Yoga, yoga in action, yoga in action in our daily activities. The three pillars of Kriya Yoga, Tapaha, Svadhyaya, Tapaha, our self-discipline, Svadhyaya, our self-inquiry, the way we understand our own reactions. Ishvara prani danani, our self surrender, our, our act of surrendering and accepting. I hope you can allow me. I'd like to read a quick from Mr. TKV Desikachar, um, one of my favorite commentaries on this sutra, which says, Our yoga practice, or excuse me, I would insert our, our life in yoga, must remove our physical and mental impurities. It develops our capacity for self-examination and helps us to understand in the final analysis we're not the masters of everything we do. So as yoga practitioners, 
we're committed to aligning ourselves back to our spiritual nature over and over again, moment to moment in our daily life. So we're always doing yoga as long as we're finding a way to do that. We practice our yoga through tapaha, through our self-discipline to remove impurity. So every time we choose good food, when we choose sattvic food for ourselves and our families to promote our immunity in this time and our vitality, it is the practice of yoga. When we choose what we're going to feed our senses, it's tapaha, isn't it? To be discerning about the information that's coming into us through the media and other people are making sure that we're choosing clear and accurate information that supports our growth. Tapaha burns away any negative tendencies that we have. It gives us the personal discipline to continue whatever our chosen path or practice in yoga is at this time. So many people throughout the world are practicing asana to remove the resistance in our body, to remove rajas, to remove tamas. We practice pranayama, the higher tapas, to unblock the nadis for the free flowing of our vitality and our good health. Pranayama, our breathing practices to, to strengthen the respiratory system to prevent the virus. And the second pillar of yoga is sadhyaya, our self-inquiry. The yoga that we practice to understand ourselves and watch and, and reflect on our reactions to our environment, to make positive choices. And we do that through contemplation and prayer, reading of this, the scriptures, coming together in these kind of communities. Um, much of my practice that has sustained me over the last few months is the practice of mantra and Vedic chanting to feel the sound and the reverberation of the wisdom of the Vedas and of yogic teachings and they give us peace and courage in this time. I've been very, very privileged to be part of an international group where um, on Sunday nights there's about 80 people from around the world and we come together to chant the Vedas, and to dispel darkness and to support each other. And it's been the most wonderfully sustained practice. And the third pillar of Kriya Yoga, Ishvara Pranidhanani, is our day-to-day -day practice of yoga where we practice it's not so easy surrendering or devoting ourselves to a chosen deity or a higher purpose our higher values something greater than ourselves something greater than the mind that's creating our, our worry it dissolves our worry so we link to our inner teacher and this helps us to find some acceptance a sense of serenity even when we're facing the most uncertain of times it's still possible so in conclusion, I'd say in this 20, sorry, in this year, 2020, may we be reminded again that yoga is not only an exercise, but a relationship, sorry, our relationship to all of our life, the way we live a yogic lifestyle, that yoga is self-empowering and it's not reliant on necessarily being in a particular location or doing a particular thing that we might be used to, that we always have an ability to return to yoga moment to moment in our life. Krishnamacharya once said that if anyone is breathing, they can do yoga. <laughs> That's all of us. So on this sixth International Day of Yoga, let's stop once again and commemorate India's ancient system of yoga and celebrate yoga's absolute relevance and importance to the well-being of all of the worldwide communities at this time. Thank you. You have to unmute your mic. Thank you, Madam. The audience of this webinar has been really enriched with your experiences as a yoga teacher, yoga teacher trainer, yoga therapist, Vedic chanting teacher, and a registered acupuncturist. Thank you so much for joining us, ma'am. Thank you so much. And now it's a great moment to seek the blessings of His Excellency, Shri VP Singh Badnorji, who needs no introduction. His work speaks volume about his dedication and concern towards the needs of residents of Punjab and Chandigarh. In these unprecedented times, his dynamic leadership and strategic management have proven unmatched in navigating through these times of crisis. Sir, I'm glad to share with you 
that during this period of lockdown, the faculty of Government College of Yoga Education and Health was engaged in bringing out the first volume of college magazine, Kalash, The Essence of Yoga, which comprises of scholarly articles on various aspects of yoga from yoga teachers, yoga practitioners, students, researchers, and scholars. Now I request His Excellency, sir, to please release the first volume of college magazine, Kalash, The Essence of Yoga. Okay. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Further, the college has come up with first volume of half yearly newsletter also. It is titled as Yog Britan, which is focused on the present scenario of COVID-19 and the role of yoga in dealing with the current scenario. So the contributors would be encouraged with the release of this newsletter with your blessings. I request His Excellency, sir, to kindly release the college newsletter also. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for your blessings. May I now request His Excellency, sir, to bless us with your kind words. Sir, please. First and foremost, let me congratulate uh, Madam Sapna Nanda for the colors and uh, all the good work that she is doing for yoga. I'm very happy to be here with you all and especially Dr. Nagender. Um, I have had the pleasure of uh, sharing a podium with him last year. He had come down to Chandigarh. He had come down again to Chandigarh I think he likes Chandigarh a lot, so I'm very happy about that. And he comes and uh, talks to us on yoga. Um, I'm very happy to have heard Madam Leon Davis, who had been in south uh, of India for some time, and she is now in Australia and New Zealand, and she is doing a great work in promoting yoga. What I would want to say today is that in the run-up to the International Day, it is a run-up because we are having it two days before, I remember that the Honorable Prime Minister Nanda Modiji had come to Chandigarh um, to celebrate the International Yoga Day the second International Yoga Day, and that was in 2017. And it was a great occasion for Chandigarh. The whole of Chandigarh was out, and I, I can't, uh, we can't uh, say that uh, there must have been about 50,000 people or so. But we all remember that day. But let me tell you why yoga people were unaware of something which has been there in India, helping Indians for centuries, but the world was unaware till our Honorable Prime Minister um, put up this idea of International Day of Yoga. He proposed in the National General Assembly of the 
United Nations on 27th September 2014. And this is what he said. Yoga is an invaluable gift of India's ancient tradition. It embodies unity of mind and body, not in action, restraint and fulfillment. What you have, uh, Madam Lean and Dr. Um, Naginda has been talking about, he has put it in a few words. Harmony between man and nature, a holistic approach to health and well-being. It is not about exercise, but to discover the sense of oneness with yourself, the world and the nature by changing our lifestyle and creating consciousness. It can help in well-being. Let us work together adopting an international yoga day. This is what he had said then. And these difficult times that we are facing, it is so very appropriate what he had said then. Nobody knew then that one of these days, we would, the whole world will be in this extreme times of the pandemic that we are facing and yoga can really help. Let me also say, our Honorable Prime Minister has made yoga a key part of the Indian global outreach, convincing the United Nations to observe June 21st as International Yoga Day and leading, and leading thousands of people in yoga demonstrations every year. This year it may not really happen. Besides the discipline rooted in ancient Indian religious traditions, as he to his own health claiming to sleep as little as live as four hours each day. That is what he was, he always says, and we know about it. And draws energy from rigorous daily yoga and deep breathing exercises, which is the pranayama we were talking about. Let me also say something about myself. I have been uh, practicing yoga for last 50 years. I recall that there was a yoga teacher when I used to be working in Ahmedabad in the 1970s. I'm trying to remember him. I can't recall his name also because I used to be going there. And since then, I've been practicing uh, yoga and pranayama. I remember him uh, with a lot of reverence because he put me on to yoga and I practice yoga every day, every single day. I'm told that I should not be doing it at my age and I should give it a gap. All this needs to be really thought of. But a very interesting story that I would like to relate here, something very different, was that in one of my delegation tours around the world, I was having a dinner with an Indian ambassador outside. And I think uh, it was um, a Nigeria or somewhere like that. And he told me that in one of his postings that he was uh, an ambassador in Bangkok, he was having a problem and he started losing his weight. And he said that he went to all the doctors, could not find what the reason was. And then he found somebody who said, you do a little of yoga and a few exercises. And that is what he said. He said, Markatasan, Vakrasan, Salvasan, and only three of these that he started doing, Dr. Nagedner would be knowing. And in one month's time, he started gaining his weight. He started getting a little fat. So people said that, you know, you'll get fat. But then he started reducing and came to the level that he, the doctors recommended. So much can be done in yoga. And... Yoga 
Yoga is not only for the, you know, you, for a children, you can have a different sort of a yoga. For the middle age, a different sort of yoga at my age. Because I remember in Ahmedabad when I was very young, I used to do the Sishashran and what not I could do. Naturally, I cannot, cannot do that now. But I have now come to a level and I do my yogic exercises which keeps me fit, mentally alert, and uh, I'm very happy doing it regularly. I must also say that I'm happy I learned so much from you. I always learn a lot whenever Dr. Nagender comes to Chandigarh and has, I have a meeting with him. I must also say that in the times of yoga, in the times of this pandemic, the COVID-19, lots of people have been very stressed. And the people who have started yoga or have been practicing yoga has had a different experience. I, for myself, I have not been able to go out. I love going out. I cannot go out very much because of restrictions. So I put more time to yoga and I'm very happy that I have been practicing yoga all this while and I can carry it on. The pranayam is also very important and I think more pranayam at my age is the right thing. I think this is all that I can say. Any other advice that I can have from Dr. Nagender and Lian would always be welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Our heartfelt gratitude to His Excellency for your kind words and gracing the occasion with your benign presence. We are really blessed to you, have you with you, sir. Thank you. Now, I request Professor Akshayanan, our collaborator, who has been a great help in organizing this webinar. I request you, sir, to please sum up the session and extend formal vote of thanks. Thank you very much, Dr. Sapna, but allow me to break the protocol and also with the permission of Governor and Governor Sir and uh, Guruji. Uh, Governor Sir just said that uh, he seeks some modification and advice on his uh, yoga asanas and pranayama that he is doing, Guruji. Guruji, you want to add something to what he is doing. It is probably focusing on pranayam. And he mentioned his Nigerian experience. Apparently, he is uh, probably attempting Vakrasan and Mandukasan. You want uh, to add something to his list of uh, yoga that he is doing? You have to unmute yourself, Guruji. You have to unmute, unmute yourself. No, yeah, this is good. So we have developed this uh, special modules, integrated yoga modules for the special development of the immune system during the COVID. That is for people below 15 years, 16 to 60 years and above 60 years. And these are very simple techniques of 10 minutes to 15 minutes, which consists of asana, pranayama, meditation, relaxation techniques, all that thing. Put it in a very simple way and I will send these uh, things to Sapnanandji, you can distribute also Akshay, you can give it and share it with our governor. And it is so nice that uh, he wants to learn more and more. That is the real spirit of yoga. Even at the age of uh, His uh, Excellency, he is thinking of growing further into the dimension and more of uh, these things will help. And particularly the Upasanas, apart from the Pranayama will be of great help. A large number of people have started taking to the practice of meditation on their role models or gods or goddesses that they want. We call it the Ishtadevata. And people can take to this. And some people have taken Kalima as their role model. Some people, Swami Vekananda as the role model. And they start doing this thing, which we call as the Upasana. We have to keep the picture in their mind and see that they do the Japa of these things by which they can bring the strength in. That process of upasana is a process of resonance with the ideals that we have. So that can be an added dimension. I will send you those things and which you can share with the governor 
and particularly for the prisoners which um, we had planned this is the time that we can do the online training for them and uh, probably if the governor talks to the concern we can start off online training for them because because of the covid we cannot uh, we could not start it actually physically and uh, this was a wonderful thing that he had told the yoga should be brought into the uh, prisoners there and this is one of the best prisons which i have seen and he has been doing wonderful work and this can be started up straight away and probably sapnanand also can join hands with you to see that it becomes possible it's easy now you can do the regular training for one month two months three months for the yoga instructor course and others they can do these things thank you very much thank you guruji thank you guruji we will uh, me and sapna ji will go to uh, governor sir and provide the covid uh, protocol details that he mentioned and thank you governor sir for inspiring about uh, inspiring story of nigeria and those asanas i was just wondering why they began to you know increase their weight for some time and then they reduced but that's a scientific question and um, along with the guruji's blessings we try to dissect out what is really happening with which uh, uh, protocol at the biological level at the scientific level biochemical level or neurophysiological level uh, i would like to uh, thank sapna ji for this excellent opportunity to collaborate with you this was really uh, come out of our lockdown experience 90 days 80 days we were uh, experiencing lockdown 1 2 3 4 and now the unlock phase this virtual uh, world provided in a in such a nice way as dr as miss lian said that this is a virtual world and uh, earlier she used to think how to go for yoga now she is in a position where she wants to decide where to go for the yoga webinar because there are so many and we have reduced the differences thank you uh, thank you uh, lian ji you mentioned the patanjali sutras and its value to our current life and especially kriya yoga yoga in action in fact today only we were discussing a pregnancy protocol with our hod of gynecology and as she said i want to remain detached and um, so i want not to have any projects so i quickly called up uh, guruji's uh, confidant and he gave me a saying from bhagavad gita that talked about action with detachment so akriya yoga i immediately emailed her and she agreed to be on our platform so this is just a small experience and an endorsement of what you just mentioned in patanjali sutras and guruji nicely mentioned about the rajpath experience and now how rajpath was called by our honorable prime minister the yoga path and now we are again back to a virtual world and not able to go out but still able to collaborate reach out to each other and do a lot of online modules yoga intervention studies uh, governor sir will be very happy to know that we have just been sanctioned a ministry of ayush project on the effect of some pranayama on the covid positive patients and convalescent patients and those were exposed to these patients so we will be carrying out that research in collaboration and under blessings of dr nagendra our guru ji whom we like to call him with our a lot of love and affection i would like to also thank all the back door team who are getting used to these new tools the new digital tools so they apologize on behalf of them that they did a small error of coming live but i can see on my mobile phone there are about 2500 people already watching so i do this very easily on the facebook what number i get i multiply that with 40 from the experience we had with the yoga scholars the pgimer group which is a group of the integrative medicine case reports we did a 89 day continuous uh, yoga series uh, representing theory and practice every day three times in a day and an accumulated uh, viewership has now crossed 1 million uh, bringing the best uh, in the world starting from guruji uh, his uh, director dr nagaratna swami ramdev uh, shivani ji and the top scientists from harvard mit they all came over and that is when i met dr uh, sapna also who was one of our um, one of the people who gave a very good talk on ayush and doshas so together we were able to compile uh, about 272 to 280 videos that are now in the archives which anybody can access and make use of so uh, thanks again thank you everybody for joining us governor sir guruji Leanne, Dr. Sapna, and all our back room uh, team. So, before we conclude, on behalf of Government College of Yoga Education and Health and Yoga Scholars Team of PGI, I extend my best wishes for the sixth International Day of Yoga. And going by this year's theme, Yoga at Home and Yoga with Family, we wish that you all live in harmony and happiness. Stay home, stay safe, 
stay healthy and stay blessed abundantly thank you his excellency sir thank you guru ji thank you miss davis thank you aksha sir and thank you all for joining this webinar and making it a success i wish you all the best god bless all Thank you.